Hello and good evening to the Rangers Academy Review. Tonight I'm joined by Derek. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, William. Yourself? Yeah, all good, thanks, mate. Good. Right, straight into it, because we've got quite a bit to chat about tonight. Hopefully we'll try and kind of condense it into 25, 30 minutes maximum, as we always try to. Okay, we'll start off with some good news. Kieran Dixon signing a new deal until 2023, and Nathan Patterson signing on until 2024. Um, I suppose, like, looking for the outside, it's great for everybody that, yet again, two young players have had their contract extended. Is it players like Kieran and Nathan that excite you for the future of Rangers, Derek? So obviously, we've seen more of Nathan than we have of Kieran, and every time I've seen Nathan Patterson, I've been very impressed. He fits into the style of play that we do in terms of the, the bombing on fullbacks and trying to get crosses into the box, full of energy. Loves the club as well. It's infectious. You can actually tell uh, how much it means to him when he steps over that white line. And I, I honestly think he's got a big future. It's just unfortunate for him that Tavernier's in front of him, uh, Tavernier's in front of him, because he, he'd have probably seen more minutes if he was maybe a left back or maybe a different position. But still a young guy, bide his time, and I'm sure his chance will come. Hopefully, uh, the next few weeks go well and we can see him a, a more often and the first team and, you know, getting the minutes that he deserves. And he's obviously working hard in the training ground. Gerard trusts him and has gave him a new contract. So all positive with, with Nathan Patterson. Um, when, when you're talking about Kieran Dixon, obviously I've only seen him personally in that sort of cameo against Falkirk. But what I loved about him is he was demanding the football. You know, he was looking to get on it and almost bossing seasoned professionals about. So, I mean, if Stephen Gerrard Gerard knows a midfielder, doesn't he? So yeah, he's obviously he's obviously seen something in Kieran and, and couldn't be more pleased for him to get get a new contract. Yeah, well, I think the big thing for me and for a lot of other fans that are obviously got an interest in the academy is that we've now got Kai Kennedy on a contract, we've now got Kieran on a contract, and Nathan's got his extension. I think for a long time now, supporters have craved to see more young players come through from the academy into the first team. And I think as we've been talking about now for a few years through like the, you know, the RFC youth updates on Twitter and the, all the mm. other guys that you know of as well, it's great to finally see the kind of light at the end of the tunnel. It feels like this is the time where we're going to start seeing guys come through. And the fact that we've, you know, sort of managed to get these three guys under contract as well as many other players, it just feels like things are moving in the right direction on and off the field. Okay, just looking at some of the loans that have happened since we last spoke, Ben Williamson going to Arbroath. Ben's obviously done really well so far at his, his loan spell, which is really great to see. I think it's one of those loans that, you know, you're going to... I mean, let's be honest about it, it's not a big name in the championship. So some people would maybe think, oh, that's maybe not a great move for Ben. But I think that's exactly this type of club that suits Ben down to a T. You know, you look at the manager, he's old school. The one thing he like sort of demands is hard work. You know, players putting in the effort, players putting in the time and the training pitch. And you know, to me, that is perfect for Ben. Dapo going out and loan to Queen of the South, obviously. Latterly, I know he's only come off the bench a couple of times so far, but I would hope that in the coming weeks we'll see a bit more of Dapo. And obviously, Glenn Middleton going out and loan to St Johnston. Uh, what do you make of those loans? So Ben obviously is a defender and uh, he'll need to defend Arbroath, you know, so you look at uh, how he's going to learn his trade and that's down the bottom echelons of the championship, you know, he, he's, he stood out well when I've read about him and seen wee clips and he's, he's, he's looking good, he's looking strong. For me it's a sort of sink or swim type loan in terms of he kind of, it's going to be the opposite of Auckland Howie, let's be honest, yeah, you know, absolutely. it'll be a bit of a a bit of shock to, to Ben System, who's obviously grew up grew up at a, a decent training facility. Not no harm to our growth, you know. It's just different levels. So it's testament that he's went there and he's playing well, you know. So I mean, finger, fingers crossed, he, he learns a bit up there and comes back. You know, it's going to if nothing add to his character and, and how strong he, he come back. Well, we don't know, but he'll certainly get a good a good um, good upbringing at our growth, and he'll have to defend a lot because they are they are kind of fighting for their survival in the championship against some decent teams. Yeah. You know, and Dapo, maybe he's obviously caught the eye for Rangers quite early from a young age, you know, coming through the academy. Um, he's maybe not featured as much in the, the first team as he would have liked, or maybe as he would have, it's maybe our success has kind of hampered him a little. You know, the boys that play in his position are, are kind of miles ahead of him at the moment. So he goes to Queen of the South, hopefully he can start starting games and, and we can see what he's made of. Obviously, it's a big summer coming up for, for Dapo and a few others and I'm sure I'm sure you'll mention that um, 
I'm sure you'll mention that later on. But these moves are great for them. You know, there's only two leagues playing in Scotland at the moment. So even if you're down at the bottom of the championship, you're getting you're getting games under your belt. And obviously most of the under 21s, under 20, sorry, and, and below and the League One and League Two are not getting games under their belt now. So it's it's pivotal to Rangers that we've got these guys playing minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, even just adding to that, obviously recently since we last spoke, Kai Kennedy is obviously two man of the match performance. He's one against Hearts, one against Dundee. You can, to be fair, you could probably argue they're two of the best teams in the championship on their day. So to have man of the match awards against both of those teams and to come away with two victories tells you a lot about Kai. And then even just going back to Ben quickly, he was obviously man of the match against Dundee. Dundee probably oh, yeah. like their, their cursed, you know, playing against <laughs> Rangers low knees and the two standout man of the match performances. Yeah. But, I mean, like for you, is that important, winning man of the match, or in the overall scheme, is it just more important that they're playing minutes? So a bit of both for me, William, because especially Kai Kennedy, who for me could be good enough for the Rangers first team in a couple of years. I'm separating Kai Kennedy because for me, he's probably the, the best of the bunch that we've got out on loan, along with, with Josh McPake for me. What um, what he should be doing is taking this chance and grabbing it, you know, with, with two hands and being the best player on a pitch, because not disrespecting it, but it is the championship. So he'll be expected to come into the Premier League into a winning team who's going to be challenging for titles and and, and have these type of performances. Kind of like Stephen Kelly's done in the, in, in the Premier League. He's, he's doing the same now at a higher level. So for me, Kai's got to go there and be the best player. Now, maybe that's putting too much on an 18-year-old's shoulders. I don't know. But, you know, if you, if you want to be a success at Rangers, you've got to, to handle that. Um, I, I, and I can see him flourishing. Uh, at the Rafe Rovers. They, they play lovely football. I've, I've watched them a couple of times and I, I read about them. I like John McGlynn. He's, he's a very good um, very good manager who seems to uh, get the best out of players and they've had some great results recently. And I can see Kai flourishing and being the main man in that team, definitely. No, Yeah, I mean, I feel the same. I think, you know, Kai at Rafe Rovers, he's stood out so far, you know, especially those two games. Managed to catch the highlights and you can just see his quality shining through. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's the goal he scored, whether it's the goals that he's creating, whether it's taking players on. And then you've got obviously Ben Arbroath. I mean, that night against Dundee, I used to catch it on the television because it was a live Friday night game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was fantastic to see like Ben up against somebody like Charlie Adam. You know, I mean, Charlie's oh, yeah. been there, seen it, done it, isn't he? You know, he's played for Liverpool. You know, he's played for Rangers. He's obviously been about so far. Somebody of Ben's experience, which is pretty much now before going out and loan to come up against somebody like that and then to be awarded man of the match just shows you how well he played that night and mm-hmm. I think it's great for Ben personally but it's also great for the academy the players can go out and loan to the championship which is a good level yeah to perform that well against that standard opposition for me is, is great and it must be a boost to everybody else at the academy because you know if they two lads can go out and do it then what's to say the next five or ten in the summer can't do it as well and I think that's Absolutely brilliant moving forward. Mm-hmm. Just on to some other news, obviously, a couple of players have left the club. Umaro Baldi was confirmed as leaving um, at the end of the window. And Cami Palmer was obviously confirmed as signing for Lingfield. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on those two moves? So Baldi hadn't seen much. He hadn't obviously been near kind of the first team. I yeah. think that probably says it all. William, you'll be able to talk on that more than me. But he came in a few years ago and, he, and he's not made that step up now. They obviously didn't see him on worthwhile a new contract or to send them out and loan that they've done with Dapo and, and a few others. So it probably says it all for me now. That, that it's no disgrace to not make it at Rangers, and I hope the boy goes on and have have a has a good career. He's had a good upbringing. Someone will take a chance on him, you know. Uh, with Cami Palmer, you know, he seems to be like a almost like a testimonial at Rangers. The amount of times people have been talking about him and the amount of loan deals he's had, and he's had some good loan deals. I know a Partick Thistle fan said he done okay there in, in spells. Linfield's obviously, the League of Northern Ireland's obviously a step back for him, but there's no reason why Cammy can't go there and shine and, and come back again. You know, so the guy's been, uh, he's been in America on loan, he's obviously came from, from Canada. The guy's got a bit, the boy's got a bit about him, uh, and I hope that he goes to Linfield, gets the games, maybe gets a bigger move off the back of that, because, you know, people in the League One, League Two in England will take a chance on people from the Northern Ireland who have done it in the past. It's a pathway that's that's came. So Cammy's obviously captain the, res- the reserves in the 20s, previously so he's obviously got a great attitude so hopefully fingers crossed for these two boys they go and 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 have a career out at Rangers is not as the be all and end all to us William but these guys will yeah, hopefully go on and hopefully go on and make good careers it's unfortunately it's not Rangers but again 
you need to be really exceptional. Uh, you need to be, uh, if you look at Stephen Kelly and Josh McPake and, and Kai Kennedy we're talking about previously, they are exceptional for me. And even them are not guaranteed to get in the Rangers first team in the next two years. And that shows you the standard. So it's no disgrace. And I, I really wish them all the best and hope they go and make good careers for themselves. Yeah, look, I think that's pretty much spot on with Cammy. I think it's one of those ones taking a step back to take a step forward again. I think if he can go to Lingfield, get yourself fully fit, get yourself in the team, play regularly, there's no kind of harm in doing that for six months or 18 months because you're in that period, as you say, you could get picked up by an English team, you know, a League One, League Two, and then it's just a matter of kind of gradually building up again. He's been slightly unlucky, Cammy. Like, he just seems to keep picking up and injuries so every time he gets going he gets a knock and then he's out for a couple of weeks and then he's trying to get back in the team again and then he's out again and I think for a player that's obviously one of the worst things that can happen because you yeah. would love to get 15, 20, 25 games where you're just constantly rolling and you're playing every week but Cammy's never really had that out and loan and I think that's possibly one of the things that's going to hurt him going back to Omaro I think yet yeah, again there's a lot of things with that I think possibly he's been back in Portugal for a while now I believe so it's maybe just one of those ones where getting them back over here was going to be an issue. Obviously, with the new kind of rules coming in with Brexit and signing players under 18 is going to be problematic. Mm-hmm. Then, obviously, at the end of the day, there is players ahead of him in the pecking order. And there's also guys at under 18s who are probably a little bit closer than what Omaro is. I mean, guys like sort of Mackenzie Strachan and Connor Allen in particular, I really like him. These guys will probably take the step up so you've got a guy that's there who's got six months left in his contract, or would you rather, you know, work with guys that are 16 about to turn 17 who are going to progress over the next year potentially into the B team? You know, there's so many kind of wee ticks in the box there that it's probably mm. the right thing to do for both the player and the club. Um, but I wish, obviously, both guys all the best in the future. And uh, I'll obviously be keeping an eye on their, their future careers all being well. Okay, moving on to the guys who are out on loan and who are playing... Stephen Kelly was somebody we spoke about the last time. Obviously, we talk absolute nonsense because we thought he was going to be a, a regular starter under John Hughes and then he never played like the next three games. Obviously, one of those was against Rangers, to be fair, but yeah. he seemed to drop out of the team. But then the last two games, he started. Is that just something that Stephen's just going to have to get used to, that even if he was to come back and play at Rangers, he's not always necessarily going to be a guaranteed starter? I think so. Just shows you how much we know William is, isn't it? We were singing John, <laughs> John Hughes' praise and how he was going to bring Stephen Kelly on and get him in our first team next year. But anyway, it it just happens, doesn't it? It's a hard, the SPFL um, Premiership's a, a hard league to be successful in. Ross County are against up under the cosh for most of their games. You know, they're, they're tenth to the eleventh in the league. Um, so it, you know, John Hughes is going to go with you know maybe a, a bit of sturdiness. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, and I, I wouldn't look too much into it. The fact that he's got his place back is hopefully he cements it. He scored an own goal at the weekend, but also got man of the match I read as well. So yeah. he's he's contributing, you know, he, he, I wouldn't be worried about it. I'd be worried if he'd only made four or five appearances to date, but he, he's not anywhere near that. He's probably going to feature another 10 times towards the end of the season. And for me, that's been a success for Stephen Kelly. He knows what it takes now to be successful in this league. Has he got a bit to go? Of course he has, but... I wouldn't worry too much that he lost his place for a couple of weeks because John Hughes will have his, his soul still set out for certain games and maybe Stephen Kelly just doesn't fit into that. Just like, you know, Ryan Jack plays sometimes or Glenn Kamara plays sometimes. It's just that I just see it as the same as that. Yeah, I feel the same way. I think it's just a learning curve. You know, there's certain games that managers will play certain players. There's maybe certain games that you're going to change your style. But that's up to Stephen to then maybe look at other sides of his game that he needs to improve upon. That the manager then can't take him out of the team. I mean, I think, as we spoke about in the last pod, I think that's him over 20 games this season in League yeah. Cup. So I think for a lot of players, that's a good, you know, kind of set to hit. And then you want to get to 40, and then you want to get to 60. And whether that means like another loan next season or not, then we'll need to wait and see. But if you see even the more football he plays at this level, the better he's going to become. Mm-hmm. Because like the experience is going to be there. He's going to know when to do certain things at certain times. He's probably learned a lot about himself this year. You know, like playing at air is probably slightly different from playing at Ross County, and that's no offence to, to Ross County at air. But, you know, you're going for the championship to the premiership. You're playing Good against job. Rangers, Celtic, Hibs, Hearts, etc. every other week. So, you know, the competition's tougher, and that's just mm. something that... But, hey, David, when you play for Rangers, there's an expectation you need to win every game. 
and that's how it's got to be. And I'm sure Stephen's learned a lot this year. Um, looking at James Maxwell and Reese Breen, they've started the last two games for Queen of the South. Obviously, James at left back, Reese in at centre back. I just think for both of those players, it is important yet again that they just keep ticking over. For Reese in particular, I think, as we spoke about last time round, because I do feel that come the summer, Reese probably will move on. But if you can get a regular run of games at championship level, then hopefully that will allow teams to have a look at you moving forward. I uh, totally agree. I, 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 and obviously, it's a Rangers Academy review, and we always want to get people on the first team. But it's about boys making careers for themselves, you know, and going to Queen of the South on loan and getting 10 games between now and the end of the season for Reese is probably key for his mentality and for his confidence. Uh, obviously, injuries in the past, etc. So it puts them in the short window for me. Queen of the South at a decent size. So even if he gets a year contract there, again, one good season. And I mentioned this in the last pod, pod look at Craig Halkett and the likes, you know. Back in the championship, obviously with Hearts now, but you know he'll be on a decent wage. He'll be he'll be he's playing again in front of he'll be playing in front of a decident stadium, probably back in the SPL next year, uh, unless they unless they uh, capitulate. So listen, it's all about getting out there and getting games for these guys, including and, and Max Maxwell maybe slightly different to Reese in terms of uh, future at Ibrox, but it, it's great for um it's great for them to get this experience uh, in the championship at a very good level. Yep, get moving on to Lewis Mayo. Um, Lewis has been quite regular this season overall. I think he's missed out one or two games where I think they've changed the shape a little bit. But for Lewis, obviously he's coming back to which what's going to be quite a a difficult position in the summer. You know, obviously with the additions now of Simpson, and then obviously you've got Katic coming back. You potentially still get Balligan if he was to stay. Um, George Edmondson, Goldson. Yeah, <laughs> Lander. I mean, it's a hell of a position to try and break into. So I do kind of yeah. worry what will happen with Lewis in the summer. But I think, yeah, again, just going back to what we said previously, as long as he's playing games at the Championship, it might allow him to get a loan move to maybe the Premier Division next season. So it's Lewis, what's he, 20? William, 20? 20 now, mate. Right. So what, what you're thinking about Lewis, I've always, I've seen more of Lewis than probably all the rest of the guys we're talking about here in terms of obviously he's been about the first team. I've seen him in a few academy games and I've seen him in the highlights in the Championship. I like him. I think he's got all the attributes to be a, a top centre half. But just what you've just said there, it's the hardest position <laughs> to blood a youngster. Because well, how, how many in the past have we had really that have come through? You're talking Scott Wilson, Bob Malcolm. There has been a few, but it's very difficult to come in there and be a mainstay, especially when you've got a Swedish international, Nigerian international, Connor Golson's solid as a rock. Mm -hmm. So I do feel sorry for him. What I would do personally is, is get him out to, you know, Ross County. <laughs> or uh, Livingston, something like that, if they would take him and see how he goes. You know, there's no rush from Rangers' side here with Lewis Mayo. If he's 20, he can, he's a centre-half, he can play he's 34, 35. There's no rush here. He won't be on big wages. So I'd like to see him maybe another year, see what he's like when he's 21, 22, before we really make a decision on them. Uh, because I've always liked what I've seen yeah. of Lewis, and hopefully he can hopefully he can have the good the remainder of the season, get a decent loan, and then chap Gerrard's do the year after and say, right, what's happening here kind of thing. No, I feel the same. I really like Lewis. Lewis is somebody that he's always one of these guys that's been kind of, what would you say, sort of slightly under the radar, you know, because mm -hmm. it's always all the attacking players that get a lot of the chat <laughs> on Twitter because they're the guys that are scoring the goals, creating the goals. Lewis is just like one of these kind of quiet guys that just goes about his business and does it really, yeah. really well. Technically a good player. Played at most of the age groups for Scotland, so that probably tells you a lot about the kid as well, that pretty much every age group he's been picked because he's mm -hmm. been that good. He's composed on the ball. He can play fullback. He can also play in the kind of hold the midfield role as well. So he's got that versatility to his game. Yeah. Obviously, Don Fermlin's had a really good season. Yeah. You no, know, it would be great to... I mean, personally, I would love to see, like, sort of most of our players playing in that playoff in the championship. I'd love to see them going toe-to-toe -to -toe at the end of the season. To <laughs> That'd be great, yeah. <laughs> because that's what you want. You want that game that means something. See, when you're playing in the playoffs and that one game's either going to send you through to the final or that's your season done. I want to see what the players are like on that day because it tells you a lot about the players in terms of how they can cope with the pressure and with the expectation of trying to win games of football. And I think those yeah. kind of games will be fantastic come the end of the season. Right, moving on to our star attraction for this week, it's Josh McPake. Obviously, we've in the past spoke about a couple other players. This time it's Josh. Interesting character, Josh. You know, if anybody gets to know Josh, he's a really, really nice guy. He loves these tricks. He loves taking players on, loves doing special things on the pitch. But 
we're just going to talk a little bit more about how he ended up at Rangers, etc. So Josh started off at Colts Wood Colts in Colt Bridge before moving to Airdrie Boys Club a few years later. Kind of further down the line, Josh ended up signing for Hibs, where he caught the eye of Craig Mulholland, who, strangely enough, for that particular game, he was actually due to watch another Hibs player, who ended up signing for another club later on. Um, but the manager, uh, sorry, Craig Mulholland that night, decided that he was going to go back and watch Josh a few more times. And after doing so, he decided to make a move to try and sign him. And eventually, after speaking to Craig and having a look around the training ground, Josh did sign for Rangers. The first season that I really remember, Josh, I think was 2017-2018. And my, I would say my standout memory of Josh was when he scored a hat-trick against Celtic in the Glasgow Cup group stages and a 4-2 victory, which helped the club qualify for the final, where they went on to win 3 nothing against Celtic yet again, mm-hmm. hearing Dixon scoring two and Kai Kennedy getting the other. Uh, the following season, Josh was part of that under-18 team. They went on to win the League and Cup double. And I have to say they were exceptional that season. The quality of guys like Dapo and Josh and Kai and Kieran and Kyle McClelland, etc. just to name some of the guys, were absolutely phenomenal to watch. And Josh also that year played a part in the Rangers reserves winning the league title, beating Falkirk in the last game of the season. Um, so it probably wasn't a surprise that at the end of that season, Josh signed a new three-year deal which kept him at the club until 2022. And a month after that, at the age of just 17, he joined Dundee and Lone in the championship. Um, unfortunately, because of injury and because of loss of form, he actually returned slightly early. Um, and he ended up kind of finishing out the season as part of the Rangers development squad. Um, the following summer, which was the summer of 2020, he obviously decided to join Morton and Lone to get more first team experience until the January transfer window. And it was his impressive form at Morton that caught the eye of Harrogate Town, where he is obviously now signed until the end of the season. I think, for me personally, this is the test that you know, Josh has been looking for. League 2 in England is a step up, in my opinion, I think, as we said the last time. And just recently, Josh was voted as the Goal of the Month competition winner, and he's impressing supporters. And I suppose the big thing you look at now is that Josh is now coming up for the last year and a half of his contract. So for you, Derek, is it now important for Josh that we see him kicking on at Harrogate so that he does have a future at Rangers? Yeah, I think he's got to continue to, to catch the eye. Um, he's, he's made he's played in every game that they've had since he moved down there. Uh, he scored a, a really good goal and he's always on the ball as well. And Harrogate are sort of a mid-table team, as we know, but they, I've watched them a couple of times and they get the ball down. Yeah. That'll shoot Josh to a tee. Uh, he's a match winner, William. I've said this before. And he can put the ball in the top corner. He can put it in a six pins for someone. He's, he's, a, he's a smashing player to watch. What would be better than watching run, him running out of Ibrox in a couple of years' time, you know, leading the uh, leading the, the strike line? But with 18 months to go, he's really up to Josh now to go and push himself into these plans that, that, that we're going to have going forward. Yeah. He's got all the attributes. He's got, um, as I said, that match winning you know, that kind of X factor that players need. Um, he says he's like a great boy, great attitude. Gerard's had him in, in about the first team. He obviously rates him. Again, I'd, if I'm Josh and I'm going and trying to play every game and score three or four goals, get three or four assists, come back in the summer and, and you really have a sit down with the management and see where they think he is and see if he's yeah. worth another deal. For me, I would I would give him another year maybe on top of that and get him on loan uh, to a, a team in the Premiership to see how he would how he would go. Again, I don't want to keep using Ross County as a scapegoat, but just because it's worked <laughs> well for Stephen Kelly, but somewhere along the lines to see how if he can hack it against Hibs, against Aberdeen, against the teams that we need to beat to, to win and be successful. So I love him. Match winner, great to watch. Mercurial talent. Is he going to make it at Rangers? I'm not sure. For me, it's up to Josh to go and push his way in for me in yeah. the next few months. Yeah, well, I think the big thing for Josh, just as my cat decides to pop into the camera there, <laughs> uh, I think the big thing for Josh is like, so you see the different sides of the game. You know, we, we spoke about Stephen Kelly that had basically been at the club since he was a kid, whereas Josh has come through like Colts with Colts. He's went to Airdrie Boys Club, he's been at Hibs, he's ended up at Rangers signing his pro contract, etc. It just shows you all the different ways that players can end up yeah, yeah. at this level. And I think that's what was really interesting finding out about Josh. and you know, when I found out that that night that Craig Mulholland actually went to watch another Hibs player, 
it was quite interesting because he wasn't there to watch Josh. He was actually there to watch another player who ended up signing for another club. So, yeah, again, was it maybe just luck that night that Josh played that well or was it just fate that he was going to end up catching the eye of somebody eventually? I think it'd be hard to go and watch Josh and not have him catch an eye. You know, mm-hmm. he, he's going to try things with the ball that nobody else does on that pitch. And I don't know who else was on that pitch, but I guarantee he'd be the most skillful. Yeah. You know, so I'm not surprised. But in terms of you're talking about pathways, it, everyone get you know, it's everyone, not everybody goes to the academy at five years of age and all of a sudden, you know, goes in the first team. So it might, it might um, cause him good ground in the fact that he has been about, you know, a few other clubs um, before he actually got to Rangers. Um, and it's a chance to, but I'm not surprised he, he caught Kimo Holland's eye um, when he went to see someone else because I imagine Josh being a bit showy off with the ball and in games at that level. And I'm not surprised that he ended up signing for Rangers, no. No, look, I think the big thing about Josh is that that season that Dundee 18s won the League and Cup double. And he was also part of the Rangers reserves winning the league. I mean, that season, him and Kai and Kieran and Dapple were just ridiculous at times, including Matty Yates, who's obviously now left the club. I mean, some of the goals we scored that season were just ridiculous. Some of the score lines that we were running up was was ridiculous. We were, I think it was like one of the games against Hibs. I think we scored like seven or eight goals. And I mean, Hibs were a good team then. You know, it's not mm. as though they were a poor team, but we were just so far ahead of everybody at that point. Um, but Josh is just a real talent, and I really hope that this loan spell at Harrogate pushes him on because I mean that's a tough level, and the fact yeah. he's already impressing people down there, the fact that he's won the goal of the month. I know somebody can score a goal at any point; and it can be special. But Josh has just got that about him, and you wouldn't be surprised if it happened again before the end of the season because he <laughs> can do that. And I think that's a big thing for me. Right, guys, thanks again. That's uh, episode four of the Academy Review, all over and done with. Sadly, yet again, we still don't have any League 1 and League 2 football, but hopefully by the time we talk to you again, we'll have a couple more of the guys actually playing and out on loan so we can talk about more players rather than just the kind of six or seven that are primarily playing in the Championship and in the Premier League. Feel free to check us out on Acast and Spotify and all these other great places that you can download the pod. And we're also on YouTube, so feel free to give us a like and subscribe for future pods. Thanks again, and we'll speak to you all soon. Thank you. Bye.